Hi Church, it is so good to be with you today to share the Word of God and I hope that you have been blessed following our pulpit sermon covering on end time studies through the epistle of Thessalonians. Now in the study of the church in Thessalonica, so far we understand that it was a young church with many issues in regards to Christian conduct or attitudes and Paul being a very good spiritual father who wants to ensure that the church he planted you know, was growing strong in their faith. And just like uh, you know, we, we used to say that we don't throw the baby into the bathtub after delivery. So Paul sent Timothy to the church to check them out and also to encourage them. Now last week's sermon, we heard about Paul's admonishment to the church to live a life that is uh, pleases that pleases God and by avoiding sexual immorality, to love one another and to work hard so that they can earn their own gifts. And today we are going to continue in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Now, Paul was addressing a very salient question facing the believers. They were asking, what is the Christian hope for those who have died? Now let us turn to the passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18, and I want all of us to read the word of God together and uh, that will be flashed on the screen in front of you. Uh, if you have your Bible, let's turn to the passage and let's read the word of God together. Now let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Reading from verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain and unto the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven, and with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now, Verse 18, therefore, comfort one another with these words. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you at your feet to learn from you. Anoint my lips, Lord, even as I speak for your word. Let these words go forth in power, in truth, to build up our faith and to edify the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the passage of scripture that we have just read, you know, is often preached in uh, wake services or funeral services to clear the doubts of Christians and affirm their faith, especially concerning the destiny of their loved ones who have passed away. In the same way, Paul was responding to, uh, to the believer's question, what is the hope for Christians who have died? What happened to the dead before Jesus returned? Very interestingly, Paul started his reply with this sentence, I do not want you to be ignorant. Now, the title of my message today is, Do Not Be Ignorant. Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant. What is the meaning of ignorant? Maybe you can type into the chat room and say it's your definition. You know, the word ignorant could mean not knowing, uninformed, uneducated, unwise, unread. You know, we often hear the phrase that uh, ignorant of the law excuse no one. You can't get away from responsibility or liabilities just because you do not know the law of the land. So being informed and having knowledge have the advantage that we can live a peaceful life and the wisdom that we have to make decision, whereas compared to living in ignorance, 
you will get yourself into trouble with unwise decisions that may deprive you of opportunities in life. So today we are going to look at three points that Paul highlighted concerning the believer's ignorance. Number one, do not be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep. Secondly, do not be ignorant about the resurrection of the dead. And third, do not be ignorant about the return of Christ. Let's look at the first point. Do not be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep. Now, this verse refers to those fallen asleep. What does, the, what does it mean to be fallen asleep? Now, when you fall asleep, you take for granted that you will wake up. And Paul is referring to those who have fallen asleep but do not wake up as expected. And the body is still asleep, they were lifeless, and when we go to check, we will pronounce him as dead. Yes, you know, when one of our loved ones pass away, we grieve. Now, it is okay to grieve. We do not be ashamed or apologize for our griefs or being sorrowful. He has nothing to do with our faith. It doesn't mean when you grieve, you have a weak faith. No, not at all. Now let's look at the example of Jesus when his good friend Lazarus passed away. What happened? Jesus wept. You know, for we are human and we have emotions and we have feelings. So the death of a loved one that has uh, separated from us and we lost their companionship, of course we will feel sad. Of course we will grieve. But as believers, Paul is saying that we should not grieve and be sorrowful like others who have no hope. For we who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we grieve with hope. You know, recently I conducted a funeral service for a family, and uh, the son is a Christian. And the mother, praise God, the mother accepted Christ a day before his son's departure. So after the funeral service, the mother came to us and uh, said that she wants her remaining children to be Christian too because she believes in Jesus' promises that she will see her son again. Hallelujah, let's praise the Lord for out of one death came forth a new life in this family. For they believe in Christ, they will see their loved ones again. Isn't this awesome? Isn't this awesome church? Hallelujah, out of one death, you know, came great rejoicing in heaven. Now, for those of us who have lost our loved ones, I know he or she could be very dear to us. You may say you don't understand because you have not lost or experienced losing someone you love dearly and you do not know the pain that I'm going through. I once asked Dr. Edmund Ng, who is the founder of the National Association of Christian Counselors. He's trained in psychodynamic therapy and he is one of the few Asian certified with a fellow in Thanatology, which is grief therapy. So I asked him this question, what is the most difficult case that you counsel? He says, without any hesitation, that parents who are grieving for their lost son or daughter. Now today, I want to encourage you, especially parents who have lost their children, I want you to hear this. God understands the pain that you have gone through you know, when the child is separated from you. For God himself lost his own son. Jesus was very close to his father, just like your daughter and your son was very close with you. Jesus delighted in spending time with his father daily, just like your son or your daughter may have spent hours you know, daily to chat with you. And in Matthew chapter 25, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, God had to distance himself away for a moment. Jesus cried out to his father, 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 why have you forsaken me? You know, for that moment, just imagine the pain of the father hearing the cries of his son, and yet he could not respond. Why? Because God could not bear to watch his son bore the full guilt of our sins, the sins of the whole world, and the pain God the Father had to go through. 
for the first time in history, for the first time in the fellowship of the triune existence, Jesus was separated from his Father's presence. That has never happened before. Now God wants to affirm you, my friend, especially those who have lost your children or your loved one or someone that's close to you that is so dear to you who have fallen asleep. You may have said, God, you don't understand. My friend, God understands how you feel. He wants to assure you today that those who are in Christ, your son, your daughter, your loved ones, or your close friend, they are redeemed in a safe and secure place and the most satisfying place because God, God is with them and you and I, we shall join them one day. So my friends, let's cheer up. Let us stop living in the past and let us move on and start you know, loving God again and pick up a healthy hobby maybe, you know, and live your life for Jesus and serve God again. You see, death is ever present. Death is inevitable. Death is not the end, but a parenthesis for all of us, we will have to face death one day. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says that it shall be appointed men to die once and after judgment. But to those who are in Christ, you have an endless hope. But to those without Christ, you have a hopeless end. That is what Paul meant by grieving without hope. Therefore, my brothers, do not be ignorant, for there is an endless hope for those who have died in Christ, for we know one day we shall meet them again when our time comes to fall asleep. Secondly, do not be ignorant about the resurrection of the dead. In verse 14, it says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. Now, we believe that Jesus was crucified and died, but on the third day, he was risen and he was recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 8. And after, they say that after Jesus was resurrected, he appeared to Peter, he appeared to the twelve, and after that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at the same time. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to Paul on his way to Damascus. Now, Paul was making a point here that the risen Christ is our hope, and it is true, for there were so many witnesses. Now, Paul also asked this question, what are the consequences if Christ is not raised from the dead. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 19, he said that, then our preaching is in vain for the gospel is not true and our faith is worthless. Then I'm a false representation of God and uh, you know what I'm saying here, what I'm talking to you here, we are wasting our time. And all of us, we are still you know, lost in our sins. And our faith is just a fantasy. And if the only benefit we have believing in the Lord Jesus Christ is limited into this life on earth, we are the most pitied people that ever live. Why bother, my friends? Why don't we just eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow we will die anyway? But praise be unto God. Someone shout praise be to the Lord of God, of hosts. Jesus is resurrected from the dead. Praise the Lord. Because He is resurrected from the dead, you and I who believe in Him will be resurrected with Him also. Someone shout, Hallelujah! Jesus is alive! Hallelujah! Amen! Now, death may be final for human life. For when we die, our body will return to the ground to ashes and dust, just as Genesis chapter 3, verse 19 says, For dust we are, and dust we shall return. You see, a human being is a tripartite being with a body, with a soul, and a spirit. So when our body dies, 
our soul and spirit is liberated to live on. Death of the body is not the end game of life, but it is the beginning for our soul and our spirit to live on forever. So you may ask, is there really a spirit and a soul in our body? Now I'm going to show you this scene captured by a CCTV camera showing the soul leaving the body. Now due to copyright issue, I can only show you these photos. Now the first photo, you can see that a man was warded into the emergency room. At the bottom left, you can see the date and the actual time that it's running. So a medical team was attending to this condition and his pulse rate. And the second photo show that the pulse reading of, of, you know, of this monitor has stopped. So that means that this man has stopped breathing and he is clinically dead. So immediately, an invisible being rose from his body, as, as you can see in the, in the middle of his body in the photo, you can see a misty image of a being leaving the body, then disappear. And the third photo, the medical team rushed in after hearing the alarm that is triggered. They try to revive him, but he is dead, for his soul and the spirit has left him. Now, whether you are a Christian or not a Christian, my friend, you know, the difference is you will live on. The, the spirit and the soul will live on. The question is, where does the soul and the spirit will go to? Now, I wonder, you know, where did this man's soul and spirit go? So, how can you be sure that your soul and your spirit will go to when you die? That will depend very much on your decision before you die. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, John, the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, said this, This is my testimony, that God has given us life through His Son. He who has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have eternal life. Now, Apostle John, the disciple of the Lord Jesus, is testifying that all of us, regardless of race, regardless of creed, we need Jesus. And Jesus is the only way, and He is the only answer for our soul and our spirit to rest in the place where Jesus has prepared for us. My friends, death is not the end of the story. When we close our eyes and when we wake up to an unfamiliar place, where could your soul and your spirit be? One question remains. How can you be sure of your eternal destination? Now, Jesus gave a very apt reply here. In John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever believes in me will never die. Do you believe? Do you believe this? Jesus is asking. Do you believe what he says? Now, the only way to overcome death here is to have faith in Christ. In, you know, because he has res resurrected from the dead and he declared that I am the living God. I am your hope and I am your savior. So my friends, I don't want you to be ignorant, but to be well informed that believing in Jesus is the certainty of your eternal destination. You can only decide when your body is still alive. If you, you know, live, if you, you were to fall asleep, that will be the end of the opportunity. So don't miss this important opportunity right now. You are already well informed that Jesus assures eternal life to those who believes in Him. The question is, will you say yes? Yes to Jesus. I want Jesus in my life today. I want to have faith in Jesus today. So wherever you are, whatever situation that you are in, this is a very important time for you to decide. Jesus is willing to accept you just as you are. And I am going to lead you to say this prayer. It's a very simple prayer, yet a very powerful one to determine your eternal destination. So are you ready to say this prayer with me? 
Follow me to say this prayer that will be flashed out on the screen. Now, if you are watching from, uh, with a friend or with a family member, encourage them by saying this prayer together. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and on the third day you rose again. I come before you to confess I have sinned and I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me from all my sins and unrighteousness. I accept you as my God and my Savior and I surrender my life to you to lead me. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have said this prayer for the first time, I want to connect with you. So kindly get into our Connect team and tell them that you have said this prayer and they will guide you to know more about Jesus. I have not finished yet and let's continue to our final point. Now thirdly, do not be ignorant about the return of Christ. Let's read verse 15 to verse 17. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The text we have just read, you know, Jesus says that his return will be in this way. It will, you know, it will be following in the sequence of events. Number one, Jesus' return will be victorious with the shout of archangel with the trumpet call. So his coming will be glorious. His coming will be spectacular. It will be witnessed by all the people in the world and every known media networks and the broadcasting station. They were going to cover it live. <clears throat> it is going to be loud. It is, you know, going to have the heavens trumpet call blaring and angels cheering. There will be such a great rejoicing and celebration by Christians worldwide to welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Secondly, the dead will rise first. Those who die will have an advantage to rise first. Not all the dead will rise, but those, you know, only those that, who are dead in Christ. Now the body, the ashes, it could be in the sea, it could be in the collaborum or garden or you know, any burial ground. Wherever they are, those who have made Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they will rise first and they shall meet the Lord in the air. Thirdly, believers will be in the air together with them. Then the remaining Christians, you know, who are living at the time of Jesus' return. If Jesus were to return now, that you and I who remains, then we will be caught up in the air together with the dead already raised in their glorified body. You know, we are in the midst of our Revelation studies with Pastor Chu. And just as he said, there are many different views about the return of Jesus, you know, such as a pre trip, post trip, mid trip. And uh, the latest revelation from Pastor Chu is pre raw tribulation. Now, I'm not going to expound on it, uh, but you can get hold of this, this book, you know, Pastor Chu's book on Chu on Revelation. It's a very interesting and easy book to understand. You know, and uh, about the revelation, then it will keep you wanting to know more. So check out the interesting topic, especially on the revelation, on pre raw tribulation. So you can get hold of this book from the church office or from Canaan Land Bookstore. So whatever trip that you, uh, you may believe or have the conviction in, one thing for sure is Jesus will return and you and I, will have to be prepared when he comes. You know, I want to share with you this vision that I received from the Lord recently regarding Jesus' return. Now, I was having my walk and uh, I saw the Lord jogging past me. And I caught up with him and uh, we greeted each other with a smile. 
suddenly there was a dark mist that's uh, coming towards us. And the Lord looks, the face turned very serious. And soon we were covered in a dark, oppressive and suppressive environment. Now the Lord held my hand and we dashed forward. And in a few seconds, we were lifted up into the sky and the dark atmosphere disappeared and we were right now in the clear and sunny sky. The Lord stopped and, you know, and we stood there in the sky and I watched down as the mist looks like a dark cloud spreading and, uh, into a wider area. Suddenly there was a loud explosion, boom! And I saw sprinters like arrows you know, coming towards us. And as these arrows came nearer to us, hey, I, I realized that these are people who are called out to join us. And soon the whole heavens was filled with multitudes of people. Now I asked the Lord, when is this going to happen? And he answered, very, very soon. So what must we do? And listen to what the Lord says. Tell my people to build their spiritual resources. How, Lord? By drawing closer to me and going deeper into me. What must we do to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord? How do we do that? Now, church, if I keep on ranting to you to draw closer to God and get you know, deeper into God, some of you may sigh and say, hey, you know, I've heard this many, many times already. Now, friends, the question is, is this, why do we need to build our spiritual resources? I believe it is to prepare you and I to overcome the coming challenges while anticipating for the Lord's return. Now, in business of personal financial planning, we are wise to build up our finances reserve so that, you know, during the good days, we do that so that in the rainy days, we are prepared. Now, when we face with a crisis, especially right now in this pandemic time, we are able to draw out our reserves to sustain through. So how do you build your spiritual resources? I would like to suggest these three areas. You know, it could be more than that. Number one, nurture your prayer life. You know, increase the amount of time that you spend in prayer. You know, we have 24-7 uh, prayer that is going on right now. Just take up one of the slots. Participate in the prayer altars regularly. You know, maybe invite some of your friends to join in or pray together with your family. Secondly, take a step of faith. You know, take a leap of faith from time to time. Seek God's leading, uh, especially at this time. You know, we need faith. We need God's encouragement, you know, to over so that we can overcome the challenges that we are facing. The third point may be refresh someone's faith as God refreshes you. Connect into God's uh, presence and His Word. And I believe when you receive the Word of God from time to time, you know, why not you share with someone your experience and encourage them? The Lord, you know, says, the more you give, the more you shall receive. So when is Jesus coming? We don't know when, but we want to be ready when He comes. So if you ask me, when is the right time to build my spiritual resources. It is now. Now is the right time. Today is the right time. And it is never too late to start today. Now in summary, you are not ignorant anymore. For you are well informed today that everyone will fall asleep. But as Christians, yes, we will grieve with hope. Everyone will die Everyone who died will be resurrected, but the difference is where will the soul and the spirit go to? And thirdly, everyone who believes in Jesus, Jesus will return to receive you. The lastly, let's look into verse 18. It says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. Now the word comfort also means encourage. And God is commanding us to encourage one another because He knows that we need it. Don't we? You know, I need your encouragement. You know, send me the text to encourage me. You know, I've been sending messages daily to encourage, you know, the teams, the group of people in my chat group. And uh, it is so good to hear from each other. 
Now, especially in this challenging time when anxieties and fears are escalating, we need each other. No one can be isolated. No one can be an island. Join the cell or join a ministry and seek out godly friends that you can network with and uh, so that they can encourage one another daily. Now, there are some practical ways that uh, you can encourage one another. And maybe you have some ingenious ways too that, uh, you know, that you can add on. You know, like sending a text or make a call or write a note to someone who lost their loved one recently. How about if you heard about a friend that has started a, a business, a food business or any other business, place an order with him to encourage him. Or someone who lost his job you may want to call him and uh, check his profile and refer uh, him to a company that may match. You know, pray with someone or for someone. You know, recently I heard about uh, my, one of my Christ, uh, church leaders and uh, her neighbor was tested uh, COVID positive and, you know, she was under self-quarantine. So our leader uh, encouraged her neighbor by preparing for her three, three meals a day until the whole duration of the quarantine that she went through. And uh, we praise God that the neighbor recovered and, you know, praise God that she can encourage her uh, for, you know, for her to in a recovery. Now, in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, is a very good reminder. He says, Let us encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today. Now, let us not retire the day without encouraging one another. This is such a good verse, isn't it? That reminds us to apply today. Today is a day that we can encourage one another. Why don't you think about someone who that, that you can encourage today? Even as we come to the close, I want to encourage all of us to heighten a sense of expectation in, as, in, as, in anticipation for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. That we will build up our spiritual resources to be alert, to be ready, and to be prepared. You know, we will not live in lukewarmness, we will not live passionless, but filled with the power of the Holy Spirit to have this conviction that the Lord wants us to live out our faith sharing His resurrection power to our friends, to our loved ones, and encouraging one another in our words and in our deeds. And I believe as we do that, we will live in the power of His love and prepare for His return. Lord Jesus, we want to live a life worthy of Your calling, that we will be always ready to share the reason of our faith in You, so that other lives will, ref will see You in us as we reflect the glory of Jesus. Now we thank you, Lord, for your love. It is you alone that we have our hope. It is you alone that we are standing on this solid ground. The Father, you alone, is worthy of our praise and our love. Let us worship with this, you know, with this song unto the Lord. In Christ alone, our hope is found. Now we thank the Lord for reminding us that that God is on the throne and He is in control. You know, every one of us, even whoever we are going, as we are going through storms and challenging times, know this, that is nothing impossible or too difficult for you, for you, Lord, to assist us. And Lord, let the peace of God and the God of peace fill our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let us encourage as you refresh us daily, that we may refresh others too. And the best way is to share the love of God to others that they may also come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So now, Lord, separate us with your love and let me bless you. And now may the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the wonderful fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The service is now over and if you need prayer, please log in to the link below and our prayer ministers and our pastor will be there to minister with you and for you. 
bless all of you and I'll see you again.